Okay. All right, so welcome to our bezel stamping necklace class. Um, I am happy to be with you guys again. And I know I see a lot of my regulars. Um, so if this is a more, you know, laid back kind of setting, I will try to um, give you some more tips and tricks um, that I normally don't give you guys. All right. So what you're going to need for this class is your basic metal stamping setup that's available at Michael's or at michaels.com. Okay. You're going to need your hammer, your block. All right. A stamp set and your bezel kit. So I'm going to flip the camera around and we are going to go, um, through everything that you're gonna need to, to start. Also, we do have a variety of hammers, so I wanna make sure that you are the using the best hammer that we have out. All right, so I am going to flip you guys around for a quick second. Move my, let's see. I always do this, I go through this. How to flip, how not to flip. And there we go. So I'm just gonna put you guys in my tripod. All right, and even you out so you could see and try to zoom in. Let's bring you up a little bit. Okay, there we go. So I could actually see what I am doing, there we go. Okay, so in front of you, you see your project kit. I took it out of the packaging. Um, you're gonna need a chain for this project or if you have a piece of silk cord or leather cord that you might wanna string that on, you could do so as well. Let's see if I could zoom in a little bit and I can. All right, so inside of your kit, you're gonna get three blanks, okay? One bezel, one sticker guide. We gave extra for the simple fact that maybe you want to play around. I always like to test my stamps on one to really get familiar with the metals that I'm using, how hard, how soft to hit my stamps. Okay. And an extra just in case one falls on the floor or you have another idea. Right here is the sticker guide that is the sticker that is going to go after you stamped your disc and design it the way you want. We're gonna, that's how you're gonna assemble it. That's how it's gonna stick inside your bezel. Last but not least, here is your bezel. Okay, it does have real gold plating on it. Other bezels that are available through Michaels and Impress Art are the oval bezel in two different sizes, a small and a large um, with the silver insert gold bezel brass insert, silver pleating, pleated bezel. Then we have the round bezel, just like we're using today, but the opposite with the real silver pleating, real silver pleated with your brass insert. Okay, I believe there's two more available. There's one that is a long rectangle. Okay, but these right here and the larger circle, these right here are my favorite. I feel like they're really easy to do. They're great stampable gifts, especially with the kiddos that are starting school. Um, teacher appreciation is right around the corner. Why not give your kids teacher, or if you're a teacher yourself, something that you could wear all school year long to remember why we teach. <laughs> all right. Or if your child like mine could be a nuisance sometimes just to um, sweeten up that teacher. All right. So here are some that are available at your Michaels. Okay. This project does not come with sticker guides. So you are going to need either your sticker guide book. If you have the bracelet guides, you could definitely use your bracelet guides and cut them in half if you'd like. But we're definitely going to go um, through the guides. We're going to learn how to stamp across. And then we're going to, for some, some of you who don't have guides, we're going to learn how to go around the outskirts of the blank um, 
to do a really nice design. Now I'm going to take you through Denim Days, which is a font that's exclusive to Michaels. Okay, I'm also going to use Homeroom, um, which is at Michaels. Might be in a different box. Okay, this is a Unicase font. I love this font. I love Denim Days as well. They're both super forgiving. Okay, Denim Days is available in some test locations um, at Michaels. Homeroom is available at Michaels, okay? So we're gonna start. So I pulled everything out. I'm just gonna take my bells little. I'm gonna place that aside. Same thing with my sticker insert, okay? I'm just gonna place that right on top of there. Sometimes when I start stamping, it bounces and I wanna make sure that I have that sticker to go back to. You're also gonna need two chain nose pliers or one chain nose plier with a jump ring um, hook. So I'm gonna come in and we're gonna use all three of them today. I wanna show you different ways that you can stamp on these. So I'm gonna pull two of these off. I'm gonna come in and I'm going to peel my coating off. And now the reason why there's coating, this blue coating on your blanks is because in transit, we don't want them to get damaged. We don't want them rubbing together because then you have a scratched piece and no one really likes a scratched piece of metal, okay? So you're just gonna lightly pull that off, um, work the corner, all right? I have no nails to pull it, so I am using a pair of tweezers. All right, and here I am. I pulled off the front and I pulled off the back. So I think the first thing that we're gonna do is go across the center of the disc, okay? And that's gonna be with your straight sticker guides. All right? And you're gonna find your center. Okay, so this is a half inch disc. So find your center. And I'm just eyeballing it now and I'm just going to put it right on top of my blank. The reason why I like to do that is one, okay, I don't like to cut my sticker guide because it secures it to my bench block. All right. Now I like to come in and find the center because I usually use either my black or my orange hash marks to mark that center. So it gives me adequate space to stamp. All right. So we're working with both denim days and um, honey, uh, honeymoon homeroom. Um, they're both a three millimeter font. So if you are taking notes and not stamping along with this class, your three millimeter font are always gonna go between your hash marks, okay? Right in between those lines, the black and the orange, okay? If you're working with a larger font, maybe a four or six millimeter, your four millimeters are gonna go, if they're wide, you're, they're gonna go on your black and your six millimeters are gonna go on your oranges okay especially if they're wide all right now i'm going to come in and we're just going to not really you know take it really slow take it really easy we're going to go with love okay so i'm going to come in in between my hash marks and i am going to mark my sticker guide so here is my l here is my o my V and my E, okay? Now, obviously my handwriting is a lot bigger than my letter set, but I'm not gonna worry about that because I've put my markings in between my black and my orange hash marks. So as long as my corresponding letter is lining up with that letter on my sticker, okay, we're good to go, all right? So I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna use Homeroom first. Like I was saying before, Homeroom is a really simple font. It's a unicase font. What unicase means is that it's not, it's a mixture of both upper and lower. All right, upper and lower. And it's very forgiving. Um, it has no serifs, so it's not gonna give you an issue with getting, trying to tilt and tap and get that extra detail in that font. It is just a straight up and down font a little whimsical so if you do um drop a letter it's not going to be so noticeable so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to pull my letter out i'm going to see that the impress art is marked on my shank 
going to make sure that when I'm holding the stamp, the impress art is facing me. That's how I know I'm stamping in the right direction. All right. I'm going to come down, lightly place it on my metal. Now, keep in mind that what you're working on is aluminum. Aluminum is a very soft metal. So when I'm telling you to place it down and drag, you're going to place it down and lightly drag. Okay. Now, this is our first one. We have two others to go. So I wouldn't want you to worry so much about scratching. I just want you to um, be aware that it will scratch if you pull down too hard. Okay. But this is just something that we're going over. We're learning our stamps. We're learning how to line them up. So you're going to place that down and you're going to line up your letter with that corresponding letter on the sticker guide. Now, here is my L. A little tip that I like to give is I like to take a Sharpie marker, okay? And with my Sharpie, Sharpie marker, I like to mark the center of my stamp. And I will show you why. So I come in and I mark my center, just like that, okay? I am a little off because I have the phone in front of me, but you get the gist of it, all right? And I'm gonna do the same thing to my O, my V, and my E. And now you're probably asking, Rita, why are you marking these stamps when they already have the indicator marks on them? And I'm going to tell you why. Sometimes when you're using your sticker guides, you get in that groove, you get in that flow, and you're not really, you're paying attention, but you feel like you've got it down packed, you, you know, you have everything going perfectly, and you tend to forget the spacing between your hash marks. So by having that line, it just makes it a little bit easier for you to line up. So what I mean by that is you're going to come down and I'm going to tilt my block up so it's easier for you to see. Okay, I'm going to push this away a little bit so I don't get that shadow. Okay, so I am placing it down and I'm lightly dragging. Now, do you see that that center line is right in the center of that black and orange? Even though I'm dragging it down, okay, you see that that black line really helps me go between the orange and black, okay? It really helps me line that up. So that's why I like to put those little hash marks. So I'm coming down, lining up, taking my hammer, and giving it one nice hit, and there is my L. Now, another thing, when you are setting up your stamps, okay, and you're ready to stamp, I always want you to get used to having your hammer on your dominant side and your letter set on your non-dominant side. And the reason why I teach it this way is sometimes we tend to take our dominant hand, pick up our stamp, okay, place it down, lightly drag, and they were like, oh my God, I need to switch and pick it up. What happens when you switch? When you switch, you know, even though you think your stamp is in the right placement, very easy to move that stamp. So don't move the stamp. You're going to hold your hammer with your dominant hand, hold your stamp with your non-dominant hand. No switching because when you start switching is when your letters kind of take a walk to the left or the right. Okay. So I'm going to place it flat, lightly drag, line that center line up in between my orange and black hash marks. Give it a nice hit. There is my O. Then I'm going to continue with my V. Give it a nice tap. Now, if some of you are having issues, okay, um, maybe you're working on brass. So brass is a harder metal in nature. So you're going to have to hit your, your brass and your copper disc harder than you would your aluminum. I think, well, I know that if you are a beginner and you're not having success because you're stamping on your brass and your copper, I think you need to definitely go back to your aluminum, your silver, or your alchemy, get, the, um, get used to hitting your stamps, get used to lining them up and then move forward with the brass and the copper, okay? 
The important thing is when you're metal stamping is that you learn your tools, you learn the metals that you're working on. Okay. And aluminum is super forgiving as well. So that's why I always like to tell my beginners that aluminum is the best thing to work with at first. Okay. Now, if you are having a problem getting a full impression, what I mean by that is maybe you have the bottom half of the E and your top E is not coming out. You're one of two things. You're moving your stamp too quickly after you hit it. So it's at an angle. Okay. Or actually three. Um, the second one is that you are really just paying attention to not hitting the stamp dead on top of it, but maybe off to the side. The third thing could be your hammer. Now, what we like to tell you at Impress Art is that your two hammers, one comes in a kit, okay? The kit that comes with the hammer has a silver colored head. Now, I'm telling you that to be successful with metal stamping in a jewelry capa capacity, you are going to need either our soft steel hammer, which is the blue hammer, or the blue Argo angle hammer with the brass head. Um, if you're asking me what the difference is between the soft steel and the brass, if you are just getting into this and you're learning the craft, your soft steel head is phenomenal. If this is something that you truly love and you really want to get into it and you're going to stamp all sorts of things, all sizes of, stamp, of stamps, your brass head hammer is definitely the way to go. Now, household hammers. You should not use household hammers when you are metal stamping. A regular steel hammer that you have in a toolbox is going to one, leave you with a ghost impression. And that is what I'm referring to with it being heavy at the bottom, your stamp. And then you have a lighter impression of that same stamp up top. And the reason why that happens is because one, it's not soft steel, it's hardened steel. And your regular household steel hammer tends to bounce, especially when steel hits steel. So we could either bounce and give you a ghost impression it could, you know, fracture the stamp, okay? Because steel on steel is not a good idea. It'll crack it. It'll compromise the makeup of the stamp, the makeup of the stamp, or you're going to get a spark. And a spark you definitely don't want, okay? With the brass head hammer and the soft steel hammer, what's great about these two is because it's a softer metal, it absorbs that shock of you hitting that steel stamp. Okay, so you're not going to get your double impressions. You're not going to get your ghost impress impressions. It's going to absorb the shock of the hammer hitting the steel stamp. Okay, so if you're having that problem, you're going to come in, you're going to line up your stamp, and you're going to do something called the tilt and tap technique. Okay, so with the tilt and tap technique, you're going to take your stamp, lightly place it down, lightly drag it to where that sticker creates a ledge and it sits on it, okay? And once you have that set, you're gonna press down on your stamp. Then you're gonna hit it once, dead on, and you're not going to pull it, you're not gonna release pressure off that stamp, okay? You're just going to bring it back, forward, side, side. And without the hammer up front, you're going to continually hit it and it's going to go back, forward, side, side. And what that's going to do is that is going to really have your impression full and really healthy looking. Okay. Now, if you notice that some of your impressions are deeper than others, feel free, guys, to go back in. I'm going back in with my V. That's what's great about the sticker guide also because it will help you. Put that stamp back in the impression. And I just want to hit it with that same force to make sure that my letters are nice and cohesive, okay? So now I have a really nice, bold love. I'm going to pull my sticker away. And there you have it. You're straight in the center. Your spacing is perfect. We followed all our hash marks. Okay, and that's how you use your straight sticker guides. I'm gonna come in with my enamel. All right, and color that in. 
Now, this is a water-based enamel marker, okay? It's formulated to stay inside of your impression. If you are having an issue with your ink staying not staying inside the impression, it's because the impression is not deep enough. This um, enamel marker is formulated to stay inside that crevice of that stamped impression and kind of form a bond. Okay, so if it does not have that crevice, that levy to actually house that enamel, it's going to pull out of it. Okay, also common question, people ask me how long, and I have to tell you, after doing shows all over and demonstrations all over the US and Europe, you definitely want to just gauge your ink here. It's very humid in here today, so it's gonna give me an issue. Um, I know that, so I'm just going to give it a little bit more time to dry when I'm in California um, or Ariz actually Arizona, not even California, Arizona, it dries in two seconds. So, you know, it's, it's, it, it really depends on if your air conditioning is on, if you have a fan blowing on you. So just use your discretion. What you're going to do is exactly what I'm doing. You're going to lightly dab it. Okay. Just like that. You're going to lightly wipe, lightly dab and wipe. You're really just going over it with a household paper towel. You don't have to put anything on your paper towel. Don't wet your paper towel. All right. And it's just going to come right off. And now it's, it's staying right inside of that impression. So this is um, the word love. It is across the center of my desk. Okay, now we're gonna work on a second. Right here, I'm gonna pull off my sticker. And we're gonna go around. So in your sticker guidebooks, if you have your sticker guidebooks, um, you see that there are round sticker guides. And you could definitely use those on the bigger ones. These are the half inch, so they are on the smaller side, okay? So what you're gonna do, we're gonna use a little bit of a different technique with this, okay? You're gonna go around the outskirts of your blank, okay? Right inside that, that, that circle. So basically your word is going to really sit right in that curvature. All right, and we're gonna do love again. Um, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your stamp tape, all right, and just take a piece off because we're not using the sticker. You definitely want to um, use a piece of your sticker tape just to secure it to the block, all right? Now, you can make a line on it if you want. You don't have to, it's completely up to you. I'm going to take my line off because I'm really not paying attention of that line that I drew on there. It was more just to show you um, where we're going with our fonts. What we're paying attention to here is that curvature at the bottom of that stamp. Okay. Again, it's facing me, right? But see that rim right here? That rim is going to line up with the edge of your metal. And what I mean by that is you're going to come in and you're going to place it, see that? Flush to the end of that metal. And you're going to stamp. And there is my L, okay? Now, when you're stamping without a sticker guide and you want to learn to line things up, you're going to keep this one simple rule in mind, okay? Your stamp that you're stamping on, so my O, is going to cover the, the last impression by a quarter inch, okay? So it's going to stick out. It's going to cover it. So I'm placing it down, and you see that it's not covering a half of it, okay? It's covering a quarter of it. So I'm coming in, I'm lining up, I'm making sure that I'm flush at my base, and there is my O. 
then I'm going to turn my block. Don't turn your hand, guys. Your blocks move. Okay, so definitely move your block. Now I'm going to come in with my V. Same thing. Lining up that circumference, that bottom of my stamp to the edge of my metal. Okay. Making sure that my stamp is covering half or a quarter of the last letter stamped. Then I'm going to move in with my E, making sure that I'm all covered. And there you go. That's how you're going to stamp around your curve. You want to make sure it's very important. Remember, this is soft metal. So when you're stamping into it, it's going to spread. You want to keep the spreading to a minimum, especially if it's going to fit inside that bezel. Okay. So you don't want to be super aggressive with it. You want to just tap it, okay? So here are my letters. I'm going to come in. I feel like I'm a little light on the top of my L. So I'm just going to come in, give it a little tap, little tap, and I see that it really fills it out. So I'm going to come in. Again, fill in my impressions. I'm going to lightly dab and lightly wipe. Now, before we continue, does anyone have any questions? Any questions? No questions? Nope. All right. So I'll continue. Guys, I'm not seeing comments, so I apologize. Let's see, none. Okay. Oh, I don't know why it's asking me. I'm exiting. It's saying to create my avatar, and I don't want. To, I don't want to do that. So we're just going to continue. Stan, and if there's any questions that I can't see, if you could just G-chat them to me so they're on the top of my screen. All right, so now we have gone over the center. We've gone over stamping on a curve. Okay, and the next thing we're gonna do is patterns. Everyone loves a good pattern, right? So let's say you wanna make a necklace and you really not into personalization all that much, but you just want to do you and go crazy and use some patterns. So in our stamp sets, okay, our uppercase always comes with our punctuation. The lowercase always comes with some design stamps. So I'm going to use some design stamps from Denim Days. Okay, now denim D's, um, your box might is going to be a different color, but these are the design stamps in it. You have a star, a circle, a heart, um, a triangle, you have a couple of dots, and you have your ampersand. So I think I'm going to do a pretty mandala with that. All right, and what I want to do is I want to come in and I just want to use the tip, tip, tip of my tape to just secure it down. Okay, I'm gonna come in in the center. You can, I'm gonna do it by eye here, but you can definitely um, use your ruler. I'm gonna come in with a circle from that stamp. And this is how I do my patterns. Now, you could also do your patterns using the clear sticker guides in the sticker guide book. I'm gonna come through the center. Give it a nice hit. So now I have bullseye right in that center, okay? Then I'm gonna come in with this. Now, guys, you could do a pattern out of anything. You can use your O's, your U's, your L's, your B's. Take your set and just turn your letters different ways. You'll be surprised that some of the times they don't even look like letters anymore, okay? So you're gonna come in with this one. All right, let's see, do I want this one? I don't want this one. I'm gonna come in with my heart. Who doesn't love hearts, right? 
So with my heart, I like to come in and I like to mark my centers, especially if I'm turning it around and, you know, flipping it upside down. I definitely want to come in and draw center marks on my font. Okay, so I'm going to come in here. And then what I like to do, just like the sticker guide, like I said, these are very small, so it's a little hard to use the sticker guides with these. I am going to mark with my Sharpie where I want my impression. Okay, and what that's going to do is those lines are going to help me get to that pattern. Okay, so I'm coming in with my heart. I'm placing it right on the edge, right on that dot, giving it a hit. Same thing. I'm lining up my line with that circle in the center that I had already stamped. I'm placing it right there. And there we go. And that's how you do your pattern work. Now, your stamps will go through both your stamp tape and your sticker guides. So don't worry if you have a sticker guide that you feel is in the way or a piece of stamp tape that's in the way, it will cut, your stamp is sharp enough that it will cut straight through. There we go. So now I have my circle in the center. I have my hearts around and now I'm gonna continue. Now, when we talked about letters and how letters, um, you could use letters, you could definitely use your Y in this set. You're just gonna turn it, okay? And give it a no, another look. So that's what we're gonna do. Now I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna hit it with another layer of dots. I'm gonna come in my center right in between. And there we go. And what that does is it creates a, a star look and I'll show you once I am all complete. There we go. So now we have that really nice, it looks like a, a, a North Star that's coming out of that center. All right, and I'm gonna just pull that away I'm gonna turn it and see where I wanna go next with it. All right, so, so far we used our circle design stamp. We used a star, okay? We used a Y upside down, right? Let's see what we have next. I think I'm gonna do some dots, okay? So I think I'm gonna come in and instead of going in my center, I'm gonna work around my outskirts, okay? So let's see. Let's see what I want to do. I'm going to come in right in between each, okay? I'm going to come in. There's a set. There's a set. Here's another set. Remember, move your, move your block, okay? I'm gonna come in, move my tape, mark, and I'm gonna come in again with my dots. All right. And one more. Oh, I'm completely off. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna pull that away and you're gonna see you have that really nice and decorated disc, okay? Also, if you wanted to do a name around it, let's come back to this one and put a heart in the center or a star in the center. You can do that as well. So I'm coming in. And I'm putting that right in that center and that looks really cute. So now, little tip and trick. If you're using Sharpie on your metal just and you can't get it off, all you're gonna do is wet, wet it again. Use a dry household paper towel. 
and pull it right off. Do you see how it comes right off? Same thing with our water-based enamel, okay? What you're going to do if you got enamel on a place that, and it's dry because you walked away from it, and you can't get it off your disc, just come back in, hit it with your, you know, wet enamel, and then you could pull it off. It'll come off again. All right, but it will not come out of your impressions. We're talking about if I walked away from a colored in disc like this. All right, all you have to do is come back, hit it again with some enamel, and then blot and wipe, and it will come off. All right, so I'm blotting. I'll let it dry for a couple of minutes because I could feel the humidity in here. I'm going to color in my star. Now at Michael's, we do have crystal setter. So if you want to elevate your piece a little, I'm going to show you how you could do that. All right. See, I'm just stabbing, lightly wiping, and look how super cute that little design comes out. Right. So now if you want to just, you know, um, give it a little pizzazz, all right? You can come in with your crystal setter and I will show you how to do that, okay? So your crystal setter is in a pack. It comes three different sizes, all right? It comes with a 1.8, a uh, 2.5, and a, actually a 3.2 and a four. So we're gonna use that middle size. So what I'm gonna do with this is that I'm just gonna go right in the middle of my circle and give it a nice hit. And that's gonna create that divot. Does everybody see that divot in the center? Same thing here with my little star, okay? Came in just a little bit more. So now with these, okay, I'm going to come in with my GS Hypo. All right, GS Hypo is a phenomenal, phenomenal glue that we use to put our crystals in. So I'm going to wait for it to boil. I'm not going to squeeze it because if anyone's familiar, with this, these um, are kind of like volcanoes. Once they start, you know, coming out, they kind of don't stop. So you definitely want to clean off your tip. You want to drop a little bead of the GS Hypo in there. You want to clean your tip off and quickly, if your eyes allow, um, put your pin right back in there, okay? And when you're storing it, never store it flat. You always want to store, store it with your tip up or this is what happens. It comes out, it starts getting all crazy. So definitely store it facing up. Then you're going to come in with your crystals. I'm going to pull some crystals out. I have all my crystals mixed. Let's get some crystals out. All right. I'm going to go with a amethyst and I'm going to go with a tourmaline. All right. So I'm going to come in, I'm going to take my tweezers and I'm going to place it right inside that divot. Look how pretty that is. And then I'm going to come in whoop, with my other crystal And do the same. Now let's talk about remnants of glue. I'm a toucher. I like, you know, if I get it on there, I really feel like I have to get it off right away. You definitely don't look and I'm doing what I'm telling you not to do. All right. You want to let that glue dry on your metal. And then you could always take some household rubbing alcohol or some antibacterial. Okay. And yes, antibacterial does work. I learned that during, I learned that a couple of years ago during our, our lockdown. All right. So, you know, take 
a little bit of alcohol once your gem is dry and just go around the outskirts of your metal disc and it will remove um, the remnants of some glue, okay? Now for your second to last step, um, we are gonna place our love, okay? right inside our bezel cup. So what you're gonna do first is you're gonna come in and you are gonna pull off one side, doesn't matter what side you pull off first, of your sticker and you're gonna place it on the bottom side, right there, of your piece, okay, the back side. And you're just going to, you know, just rub that a little bit. Then you're gonna come in the back and you are going to pull the back side of it off, okay? And you're gonna see that it is clear. All right, you're gonna turn that around, trying hard not to put your fingers on that sticky sticker, okay? and you're going to lightly place that right in the center. You have a couple of minutes to seconds to move it around to get it exactly where you want it before it becomes unmovable, okay? Look how cute that is. Now I have worn these in water. The last time I went to Aruba, I had my daughter's name in this. It did not fall out. I was in I don't recommend wearing your jewelry and chlorine or seawater, but I can tell you that I did not take the necklace off and it is still intact to this day. Okay. So definitely have fun with the other blanks that come in these kits. All right. They look really cute. If you have a hole punch, you can put a hole in them and, you know, a jump ring. Um, or you can just use them to really test out um, different techniques. All right. So after you're done with that, you're going to come in. If you're using leather, grab your leather. Okay. If you're using chain, grab your chain. And you're going to come through and pull it through. Now. If you have a chain, okay, that has a really large um, jump ring and you can't get it into, you can't get it on your chain, very simple way to take that jump ring off and place it on it. So let's, let's pretend. All right, so let's say we go to put this on a piece of chain and the jump ring is too big and it's stopping it from going onto it. So always use two chain nose pliers, okay? You're gonna come in and you are not gonna pull apart, okay? Let me just, with my old eyes, find the opening. <laughs> of the jump ring. I think that's the most, that's the hardest part. All right. So I have my jump ring. I found my split in it. Okay. When you are opening or even closing jump rings. Okay. You never want to pull them apart because when you pull them apart, you fracture the metal and the integrity of the um, jump ring that you're using, depending if it's plated or not. So you want to just put both on here and laterally twist. Do you see that? See how I could twist open and close? And you're not going to compromise um, your piece. So I'm going to pull this off, right? I'm going to place my jump ring down. I'm going to come in. Put my chain through. Pick up my jump ring again. I'm gonna place my chain. I'm gonna attach it, reattach it. All right. <laughs> okay, so I have my chains there. 
I'm going to take my other needle nose, place it right on that tip, okay? And again, I'm going to laterally close it back, okay? And you will hear both sides hit each other and they kind of click, okay? And there you go. There is your piece. All right, I'm going to put my lobster core clasp. I'm going to close that so you guys could see. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you don't see my big hands. And there you go. Here is your project. Now, literally to do this, okay, is I like to call these stamp and go projects. These are great to keep in the house. Even if you're going to a party, you're like, oh God, I got a gift card. I want to put something else. I want to make her something, you know, I want to make him something that's really quick. Just, you know, I am, I hate giving gift cards because I feel like it's super impersonal. But then again, am I, I now don't want to, you never know what to get anyone. You don't know. I'm, I'm, I've turned into the best gift, gift giver to mediocre but when i started adding stamped gifts to my gift cards now i'm like the best gift giver ever so this is even great for christmas gifts guys all right even you know just as good even with you know birthdays how super cute is that what says i love you more or you're appreciated or I'm thinking of you, or, you know, feel better, or you got that friend that's like stuck in a funk. What's better than actually making a gift with your hands to give someone, right? So any questions? Let's see, do we have any questions? Any questions? No questions? Anything, Shannon? So I know I usually get a question about enamel. Okay. We do have other com colors of enamel um, available at Michael's. So let's go through that a little bit. Um, if you want to add some pizzazz to your piece, um, and maybe you don't want to use a crystal and you want to come in, and you want to maybe color it in with a different color of enamel, that would be great. So I'm just going to take a scrap piece that I have here, and I am going to stamp some hearts on it to show you guys the different color enamels that are available at Michael's. All right, so I'm going to put this to the side. Let's zoom in a little bit. All right, so we have our hearts. We all know that we have that black because that's what we used on our love pendant. Now I'm going to come in with my brown. The brown, I love the way it looks on the brass, okay? I love how it looks on any of the metal, okay? But it looks really nice really classy on the brass. Okay, then we have we have the gold, which is like a gold flake. Okay. Oop, puddles. Puddles, puddles. All right. There we go. All right. And after that, we have. We have our blue green and we have our silver. Okay. They go on the same. We also have a different kind of enamel. So this other enamel is available at Michael's also. Okay, it comes in little pouches. These are great for your Christmas ornaments. Um, 
They come in these colors. They look fantastic. Let's try two of them. All right. You're just going to dab that on. You are going to notice the difference in the viscosity of these because they're not in a pen. They're more of a thicker um, paint, but they are the same makeup. Let's do the red. The red happens to be my fave lately. I've been putting the red on a lot. These look great, especially if you are um, doing hearts. Okay, so I'm going to let them dry. And I'm going to dab, let's pull that off, I'm gonna dab, let's pull that off. Now, another little tip and trick that when you're working with things in like really small areas and, you know, your paper towel is just too bulky, take a uh, Q-tip. And just lightly go over it. And there you have it. Let's see if I can zoom in. And there you added a really nice different shades of color in your piece. We have that sienna brown. We have that gold flake that works. It looks so nice on pattern work. Okay. We have that royal blue and we have that red. All right. So... Any other questions? Oh, I see Nicole. Hold on to everyone. You could check out the, okay. Antique stamp, stamp and nam. Oh, hi, Nicole. Nicole, that's you. <laughs> I told you, Nicole, I feel like it's Friday. <laughs> All right. Um, definitely check out Michael's. Like I said, Denim D's is in, um, in some test stores around. It's a really great font. Um, also available at Michael's is a bunch of different fonts. We have Austin. Austin is exclusive to Michael's. It's one that I've taught classes with before. I love, love, love it. All right. So I know, and the hearts are adorable, Dominique. I agree. I agree. So thank you guys so much for joining me today, me and Shannon and Nicole. All right. And I believe I have another one set up for next month. So don't forget to come back and join our class. I also want to let you guys know that we have a Facebook Live every Thursday at 1 o'clock Eastern Standard Time um, at Impress Art on Facebook. So if you want to come catch us there for your tips and your tricks and some tutorials and just some stamping fun. That would be great. So thank you guys for joining today. And I hope I see everyone soon. Have a great day.